Hello again, this micro lecture is on momentum and elastic collisions. As always, you're going to need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and your follow-up questions on Google Forms. Just adds up, this lecture is going to be a little bit longer than normal. I'm going to suggest that you break it up a little bit, pause it, kind of review some stuff before you move on, and I'll give you a heads up on when I think you should go back and review things before moving on. Okay, so first, two different types of collisions elastic or bouncing, and inelastic or sticking collisions. Now, these are kind of the two perfect extremes. So we have perfectly elastic, where something would bounce just as high as uh, you released it from, and perfectly inelastic, where it doesn't bounce at all. Now, in reality, most things are somewhere in between those. But these are kind of the two uh, categories that we imagine on the spectrum. Now, we're going to focus on elastic or bouncing collisions. We're going to use billiard balls to do that for this time. So we studied before that the momentum before a collision is equal to the momentum after, meaning if we have billiard ball A hitting billiard ball B, the total momentum of those two before the collision is going to equal the total momentum of those two after the collision. So we just add those momentum up after they collide, and we would get um, the same amount before and after. Now it may have been transferred, in this case Q ball starts off moving, or the um, a starts off moving and hits B and all of its momentum is transferred to B and A stops moving. Alright, so if you followed that so far, then you're good to move on. But if not, go back and rewatch that part because we're going to move on and introduce some new variables with this. So I know up until this point in this class, we've been looking at uh, beginning velocity and using V0 or V0 for it. We're going to start using u um, for this next section, and the reason why is because it gets rid of some of the subscripts for the small letters on the bottom. So u will be our beginning velocity, or the velocity before the collision, and v will be our final velocity, or the velocity after the collision. So since momentum equals mass times velocity, we're going to plug in u or v in for each of these along with the mass. So what that looks like is the momentum of a before is ma times u. The momentum of this one after, or sorry, before, is m times u for b, and we would add those two up. And then the momentum after, we're going to use m and v, so v meaning the final speed or their speed after they collide, and same thing right here. And so those totals, we can plug in, or sorry, these parts of the equation, we can actually plug in and replace those. So what we get is that the beginning um, speed times mass plus the beginning speed times mass equals the B final speed times mass and the final speed times mass for after the collision. So just in case you don't know, this is the uh, kind of momentum of A, this is the momentum of B. So it's the same as what we had before, we've just now uh, kind of introduced the new variables and broken those apart in case you haven't calculated the momentum already. So what this can be formalized out to is the momentum of A plus the momentum of B before the collision equals the momentum of A plus the momentum of B after the collision. It's the same thing as before, we've just kind of broken it apart. So it looks a little more scary, but it's really kind of simple um, mathematically, just adding a lot of things. So more formally presented, we've got momentum of A before and momentum of B before, and you add those two, and we have that equal to the momentum of them after, or in other words, the total momentum before equals the total momentum after. If we want to, we can break those apart into their mass times velocities, and that equation looks like this. Same things, but what you're doing is just breaking it apart. If we instead, let's say, had three things, instead of having two, things that we had to add the momentum for before, we would have three. And same thing for after. So really what I like to think of is we have one momentum term for each of the things involved in the collision. In this previous case, we had two billiard balls, so two momentum. If we do another case where we had three, then you would simply just add the three things up before and the three things up after, and they would both equal each other. And that would look like this if we broke it apart. So you can see kind of the general pattern. Don't focus on memorizing this big long thing, um, but what I would do is just memorize this idea of adding up all the momentum before and all the momentum after, and then all you have to do is plug in the M's and U's and V's to figure out what those are. That's it for this one. Three or more bullet points worth of questions, and do your one to two sentence summary and your follow-up questions on Google Forms.